The Chinese are on the move. As part of the biggest migration ever, they're moving into the cities, turning their backs on rural poverty and heading for the metropolis to seek their fortunes. Many leave their families behind in the country. Their aim? To earn enough money to send home to support them. These men are looking for work as labourers, carpenters and welders, advertising their skills on handmade signs. Women often want jobs as sales clerks, waitresses and maids. Altogether, 12 million Chinese are pouring into the cities every year. In an historic demographic shift, Chinese city dwellers will overtake the rural population within a generation. To manage this change, China plans to build 400 new cities over the next 20 years, each housing over 500,000 residents. Chinese cities, new and old, are straining to provide all these citizens with a healthy environment and a better standard of living. <laughs> this is the story of how one Chinese city is merging its fabled history with present realities to begin the long march to a sustainable future. Chengdu, the capital of Sichuan province in southwestern China, is famous for its fiery hot peppers. There is an old Chinese saying, as Sichuan goes, so goes China. But in 1985, both Sichuan and Chengdu were experiencing some pretty rough going. It proved a wake-up call. Da Peng Fu remembers when he first became concerned. I started teaching nature science in 1978 and was extremely interested in nature. Later, I read a book called The Silent Spring. I realized that in the 80s, the most sensitive topic in China was the environment. Wang Shu Da is an engineer unaccustomed to fear. Pollution isn't frightening. What's frightening is if you don't deal with the pollution and don't put importance on it. First, you need to decrease the amount of pollution, then you need to purify the water and send it back to nature. Wang Zohua believes the answer is involving everyone, including the children. People must participate in environmental protection from the time they are young and involving generation after generation. When we protect the environment, we protect ourselves. Our lives depend on the environment. Over the last decade, the people of Chengdu have mounted a massive effort to reinvent their city, starting with the river that runs through it. The Fu and Nan rivers that encircle the inner city of Chengdu were once collectively known as the Brocade River. Silk Brocade was the famed material exported on the long and tortuous Silk Road. Legend has it that the name came about because the river was so clean that when the fabric was washed in the river, it would come out brighter and more lustrous. By the 1980s, this was certainly not the case. Chengdu's Funan rivers, because of urban development, became very polluted. Before 1990, this river was so polluted that it was unsuitable for people to live beside. It was filthy. The public toilet was the worst. We called it the Rotten River. The river ran right in front of our school and it was very dirty. And we wanted very much for it to be clean. Just government determination or just money is far from enough. 
students, citizens, grandmothers, grandfathers, workers, farmers, everyone participated. To address their city's most pressing environmental problem, the people of Chengdu decided they had to master the principles of living water and to completely revitalize their river system. 30 years ago, 40 years ago, the entire population would jump in here on hot days. They fish, 54 different kinds of fish out of here. They lived in this river, they washed in this river. The river is their heart. <laughs> Near our school, just across the bridge, there was a silk factory, a paper factory, a soap factory, and a paint factory. They were all serious polluters. Da Kung Fu teaches natural sciences at the Long Jiang Lu Elementary School, right beside the river. He has been using Chengdu's Funan Rivers system as a living laboratory with his students since he began teaching. In 1985, his students became the catalyst that set in motion a process which is now transforming the city. When we were students, we could swim in the river whenever we wanted. We really enjoyed it. But when I was teaching in 1985, there was no way you could swim in the river. And I realized this was her problem. Da campaigned relentlessly to promote environmental education in the school system. His goal? To inspire the children to spearhead the movement to clean up the city's most obvious environmental problem. I felt that if the children had a deep understanding of the river, it would nurture a feeling of respect. So I organized it, the little guards of the Funan rivers. Da and his students took field trips to study the river. They identified and photographed the sources of pollution. And they came to the conclusion that, without powerful allies, they couldn't solve the problem on their own. Proubois was 12 years old in 1985. She remembers it well. We thought, what can a few primary school students do? So we decided to write the mayor a letter and ask the city government to help us. Hu Mao Zhou was Chengdu's mayor in 1985. He was touched by the children's plea. I felt it was a big responsibility but there's so much to do in the city, and I was concerned there wasn't enough money for such a big engineering project. In a country as old as China, and a city as old as Chengdu, to understand the present, you need first to understand the past. The story of Chengdu begins a very long time ago indeed. Chengdu has been the site of human habitation for as long as anyone can remember. One of the birthplaces of settled agriculture, Sichuan has always excelled at feeding a very large number of people. Dig anywhere in the Chengdu Basin and you're bound to strike history. The first signs of humans on the Chengdu Basin are from two million years ago. In addition, we have found numerous ancient human fossils at sites around Chengdu dating back 70,000 to 100,000 years ago. The Chengdu Plains civilization probably emerged around 4,000 years ago. The fascinating and mysterious Ba Shu civilization was considered mythical until relics were unearthed at San Xing Dui, just 45 kilometers from present day Chengdu. Archaeological evidence shows the Chengdu Basin has been inhabited continuously since prehistory. 
The region owes much of its success to the steady stream of cold, clear, pure water that has flowed this way, uninterrupted for millions of years. The Ming River, a tributary of the Yangtze, feeds the Chengdu Basin and comes from the Himalayan mountains. From early on, the Chinese people learned to harness the river. Here at Du Jiangyan, famed Chinese scholar and engineer Li Bing completed an ambitious project to irrigate the vast plain over 2,250 years ago. Way back then, without the benefit of modern machinery, Chinese workers diverted the Ming River into a web of canals that opened new fertile farmlands. It was this amazing accomplishment that spurred Chinese agriculture and enabled the Chinese population to expand. The Du Jiangyan irrigation system is a triumph of engineering on a par with the pyramids or the Great Wall of China. But it's not just a historic monument, it's still irrigating the plain today. Repairing the irrigation canals is second nature to the farmers here. They've done it for millennia. Their whole tradition of sustainable agriculture is based on the combination of successful irrigation and replenishing the soil with organic fertilizers. As growing markets and the seduction of the big city have brought more and more farmers to Chengdu. Some traditions have had to bend to modern ways. But some things are constant. And the river at the city's heart has continued to flow, burdened with ever greater levels of pollution. Hu Han was one of the students whose activism in 1985 led to the river cleanup. When I was a student, I didn't think that this project would be so big. This river passes by our school, by our homes, it's right nearby. We should care for it. It should be clean and beautiful. That's why we wrote the letter. We thought it was a water quality issue, but after we investigated, we discovered that it wasn't that simple. Why? Because there were many people living around the river. We hadn't talked about that. Besides cleaning up the river, all the people would have to be rehoused. The students' appeal set off a long chain of events. It took several years of planning and massive efforts to build public consensus. But in 1992, Chengdu launched a five-year plan called the Fu Nan Rivers Revitalization Project. Central to the plan was the removal and relocation of the factories responsible for the pollution, replacing the dilapidated shanties that had sprung up haphazardly along the riverside and completely restoring the banks with public spaces. We have three very large problems to solve. One, where does the financing come from? Two, how do we handle the fact that so many businesses and residents have to be relocated? And three, what is the vision for this project? We needed a concept on how we wanted to design the renovations, and we needed a consensus to make it happen. Every level of local, district and municipal government was involved in the planning and implementation of the project. An enormous education campaign was launched to make everyone aware of the problems of the river and to gain their support for the rehabilitation. The costs were kept to a minimum by including the participation 
of so many units and accepting voluntary labor. Even individuals made voluntary donations. The Funan River's revitalization project met many obstacles, but the biggest one was the need to relocate 30,000 households and over 1,000 businesses, many of which had been there for a very long time and had become attached to the place. This was really difficult. To begin the rehabilitation of the riverbanks, it was first necessary to relocate over 100,000 residents from the riverside. Entire communities had to be moved into new apartment blocks, specifically built for them. Leaving your home is never easy, but many of the people who lived by the Funan rivers were eager to go. The mayor said, the government wanted to clean up the Funan River. When I heard this, I was really happy because it meant that I could have a new house and leave this really dirty, polluted place. <laughs> For some, it meant the end of monotonous and laborious chores. Before, when I was in my teens, the first thing I had to do when I got home was fetch two loads of water. I couldn't enjoy myself when I went out to play because I was in charge of carrying the water. The people who lived along the Funan rivers in the 1980s were among the poorest in the city. When they were able to move to new housing, it was a step up. I used to live at 57 Xia He Bao. The houses there were old traditional one-story buildings, all packed together side by side, and they all had tile roofs. When it rained hard, it leaked a lot. When it rained a little, it leaked a little. We didn't have running water before. The government did this for us. Running water is very convenient. We're satisfied with the apartment. For one thing, it's pretty big. It doesn't leak. It has a toilet. That's right. It doesn't leak. Yes, it doesn't leak. We've got a toilet. In the past, even going to the bathroom was a pain. Having to line up at a public toilet was pretty funny. In the morning, there was usually not enough time to stand in line. And then there was bathing. There was no drain, so we could only take a bucket of water and bathe in the public toilets. That was in the summer. In the winter, it was impossible. <laughs> the city built 24 new housing complexes, with priority given to those who had to move. The average relocated resident gained more living space, running water, heating and other services, and a much more comfortable life. Relocating people to make way for public works is always controversial, but given the ambition of Chengdu's plan the work was carried out with remarkable sensitivity. The accomplishment has not gone unnoticed. The city helped to raise funds by building additional higher priced housing that was sold to some of the city's more affluent residents. The money raised help to pay for the relocation of those less well off. Chengdu spent 330 million US dollars over five years rehabilitating its river system. Over 600 wastewater outlets that once emptied into the river were removed. The entire length of the river was dredged and its width increased by half. 42 kilometers of the riverbank were reconstructed and 20,000 trees were planted as the city added 25 hectares of green public spaces. That we need in our urban environment to 
um, live with natural systems and to have a deep understanding of the natural systems rather than try and eliminate them or exclude them for a lot of reasons. Not only that we need to understand them, but the quality of life that it brings back into the city, the, um, the freshness, the biodiversity that returns. Betsy Damon is an American artist whose imagination and dedication to water quality have helped to build in Chengdu a very special monument. The Living Water Garden in Chengdu is a very popular place. This innovative public space is a recreational park, a water treatment facility, and a classroom that teaches everyone who goes there the way nature cleans water. Huang Shi Da led the design of the park's constructed wetlands. The water is piped from the micro pool to the plant pool and the constructed wetlands area. In this plant pool here, the primary growth is duckweed. Here, let me show you. If you clear away the duckweed, you can see the water is much clearer here. These reeds are not growing on earth, but on stones. There's one meter of stones at the bottom that the reeds grow on. The water filters through the stones and the pollution clings to them. The rocks have an absorbent quality. Microbes then also start growing on the rocks. They break down the pollution, which then becomes nutrients for the plants. When the plants are old, they're carried away. Carrying the plants away essentially removes the pollution, and the water is clean. Over the last decade, Chengdu has made a real commitment to provide cleaner water and a healthier environment for its citizens. Since the riverside has been fixed up, everybody comes down here. In the future, it will be even more beautiful. I hope one day the Funan can be like the same in Paris. <laughs> Propelled by the innocent hopes of its school children, much of Chengdu is now transformed. And the teachers and students at Longjianglu Elementary School are still leading the way. The Funan revitalization has come a long way, but there's still a long way to go. The quality of the water is still not clean enough. This is what we teachers have to do. Generation after generation, we need to teach our students that we can't live without the environment and that together with all the people of the world, we can make a more beautiful earth. The lessons of the Living Water Garden are now being replicated in other parks including the Experience Water Park, being built on Chengdu's northwestern outskirts. Officials from other Chinese municipalities have asked Huang Shi Da's advice on how to create living water gardens in their cities. And Huang has even bigger plans to develop new constructed wetlands, 10 times the size of the living water garden in the land surrounding Chengdu. This is a new development area called Long Yi. We could see more wild animals, birds, insects, amphibians. They would all be more plentiful because of the large size of this new park. I would like to call it the Wetlands Ecological Park. The government officials in Chengdu have learned from their experiences. We, as a developing country, need to develop our economy. But we absolutely, at the same time, must do this environmentally. I think that polluting first and then cleaning up is an extremely uneconomic and irresponsible way of doing things. This is the way I see it. This is 
The Chengdu River Revitalization is a model of consensus building and participation. It's showing other cities in China and around the world how local communities on their own initiative can solve fundamental environmental problems. And so progress on the long march to a sustainable future.